Verses 9 and 10. I did a little side stuff here for us. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. I rarely talk about this. And so if you've been around enough to hear me say it the rare times, I so detest the prosperity gospel and those who are stealing money from the flock of God that I, I probably do exactly what I also preach not to do. I tell people not to hold what's called, I could say, reactionary theology, where instead of basing my theology off the Bible, I'm reacting to other people. And so I run so far down the other spectrum that I miss the truth and I just go off to some other zone on the wrong end of the scale. I so don't want to be one of them that I will confess I probably underpreach the importance of giving and the blessings that come from it. I believe it to be true. I would just hate for someone to take a soundbite from me or misunderstand me and somehow associate me with Benny Hinn. I'm just naming names. I'm just saying, right? Like, there are guys, and I just, I can't. I have no peace about it. And I, I've heard Benny even do some repentive stuff lately, and I haven't followed that up. He was saying that, you know, he maybe would change his mind about things. But him and guys like Joel Olstein and Kenneth Copeland, who just looks like he has a demon. And I said that, and it's in recording, but I'm just saying what I'm saying. Like, I watch clips of him at the COVID time. It frightens me, these guys. But there is a blessing, I believe, with giving. And I would hate to be afraid to say that and people miss out on blessings. Here's some scripture references you might want to just have on hand. Um, Malachi chapter 3 is a very often quoted section of scripture uh, for people who want to talk about giving. And I, I can't ignore it. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? And God replies, in tithes and offerings. He tells him to bring the tithes in the storehouse, that there may be food at my house. And now try me in this, says the Lord, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing, there will not be room to receive it. I don't think necessarily that means you're going to be rich because you tithe. But I believe you'll be blessed. I believe God will take care of you. And I believe that you will have a peace and a joy that comes from knowing you've been faithful. Might I say, it says, bring the tithes into the storehouse. I do believe this is a biblical precedence, and we'll see more later. Tithing, I think, goes to your church. And I do believe that we all should be encouraged to also give liberally other places. I personally, and again, this is my convictions, and often I tell people, I don't want to know your tithing convictions. <laughs> because... It can stumble me sometimes. I've heard people who are very loose, and I, dare I say, I feel like I have a reverent attitude towards tithing, and I don't like hearing flippant attitudes, because I think it's a significant thing. I think it's a real deal. And so I don't think it's up to us to divide our tithes, and I'm going to give some to this here and some to that. And every now and then the Lord will put something special on your heart, maybe. But in general, I think we want to control our money and say where it goes and how it gets spent. And there's a faith thing of letting it go to the Send it to the storehouse. They sent it to the temple. And here's the thing. When they sent money to the temple, they took that money and that stuff and they threw parties. They showed up and there was a big first fruits gathering and people brought their food as ties and then they ate the food. This is why I like giving out t-shirts. We got mugs coming this week. And we see if people think it's good. Yeah. So I say, I like doing that stuff because that's part of the biblical thing is that the church is there to bless the people, but it says, again, that there may be food in my house. And it is true. If no one tithe, there would be no money to do anything with. You know, it's because we have enough people who faithfully give that I'm able to be done teaching, turning my keys on Friday. And I can be here more pouring into the people, but that's made possible because faithful people giving. And so the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 6, 2, 16, 2. I'm going to go real fast because we don't have time to spend too much time, but it's a subject that we don't talk about very often. I was like, you know what, Lord? I'm just going to take two moments because people always have these questions. And here's the scripture. 1 Corinthians 16, chapter 2. 
On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. Three rules about giving. One, it should be planned and periodic on the first day of the week. You don't have to do it weekly. We do monthly. I mean, just, but it's planned. It's a plan. We talked about that earlier. I have a plan, Lord, and I know if I don't stick to the plan, I'll probably forget or come up with excuses. I have a plan, and it's a periodic plan. I have a set time. This is how we do things. It's proportional. Now, I love the old 10% rule. Truth be told, I'm on the fence. We like the 10% rule. I've heard other people argue, well, 10% is not a New Testament thing. Whatever. The nice thing with 10% is it's proportional at least, right? I pick something, it's a proportion. And I would love, as the Lord blesses my family or whatnot, to change that to a higher percentage. You know, I know people, I did hear Rick Warren once say, and I'm not, this is the only thing I'm saying about Rick Warren, because people have different opinions, and I'm not commenting on those, but he ties 90% of his income and saves 10 Because his book has made so many millions of dollars, he just said, at some point, we just decided we'll keep 10 and give 90. And it works. It's proportional. And it's private. That there be no collections when I come. Paul was very insistent that giving should be a private thing. And I do have a problem with churches that I've got, you know, oh, the Lord has got someone giving a thousand. Who's giving a thousand? You know, and someone's like, oh, me. Or like the walking up and putting like the offering plate up in the front. I mean, like I said, I don't want to judge people's hearts, but it is to me just very awkward walking up and putting my money up. That's why I don't even like the plate because you see what goes by. Now, for what it's worth, people talk about taking up an offering, and I've heard people say, well, here you go. You're... So the plate thing's neither here nor there, but it helps us be private when there's just a little box in the back we can give to we want. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, last three things, because regardless of all the technical sides, proportionately, periodically, we also need to talk about our hearts. And Paul writes, in the second letter of the Corinthians, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Last things, it should be generously. We should have hearts that want to give generously. And with that, you have to pray for that heart because we have to do it not grudgingly, i.e. freely, cheerfully. If you can't do it freely and cheerfully, Don't do it. And that's maybe a dangerous thing to say. But that's the idea. If someone tells you, you know, I love you, and they walk, it was like, I I, I, was maybe hurts more than if you had just said nothing at all. When you forcibly shove out an I love you, it just shows me you don't love me. It shows me how hard it was for you to say that. But, That's the idea with the giving. It's just one way we show God we love him. And so there's some verses on giving. Pray about proportionately, periodically, but purposefully, but not grudgingly. That word cheerful giver in the Greek, it's the word we get hilarious from. You walk to the to the tide box. (laughs) You know, you should just look like a, you know, supposed to be privately too, so you have to find a way to balance those two out. Um Now, I could spend a lot.